What is up everybody? We are back and we finally arrived at part four of our build, bench, and expand series. We now have a six node NVMe Ceph cluster. We've benchmarked it at the five node point. Behind the scenes, I also did some saturation benchmarks. So during our last video, we, we benchmarked single thread from a single client and multi-thread from a single client. And we compared pre uh, tuning, post tuning. We've also got some saturation numbers that we're going to go through. Uh, so today, the objective of today's video is to dive in and see how much performance did we actually gain by adding that sixth node into the Ceph cluster. Is it a little? Is it a lot? Are we scaling linearly like we always say? Let's find out. Come on in. Let's check it out. <laughs> All right, guys, so just a really quick recap. Part one, we went through building a Ceph cluster, how easy it is with Ceph ADM. We put together a five node Ceph ADM cluster really quickly, several commands, and most of it was all done through the dashboard. Then in part two, we benchmarked it. We went through and did single threaded, uh, single client and multi-threaded single client. And we did that pre-tune and post-tune and we saw some really fantastic performance improvements. Hopefully some of you guys have used them out there. And if you did, drop a comment, let me know how it went. Then in part three, we took the sixth node, brought it into the cluster, showed you how easy it is to expand a Ceph cluster, and show you that Ceph just handles it and just rebalances all the data for you. You don't have to really do anything. You just set it, forget it, and it will go. Uh, so now, part four, we are taking the numbers that I gathered behind the scenes, as well as some of the numbers that we gathered uh, during part three, and we are going to compare those five node numbers to the six node numbers. So we'll do a couple just single threaded, single client numbers. I don't really think they're gonna be much better in this case, and I'll tell you why. So single threaded, single client numbers in Ceph typically don't scale very, very large, no matter how many nodes you have. You're typically at the mercy of that single threaded performance. You can actually scale pretty well in reads in a lot of cases, but writes especially are gonna be pretty static. They do grow, and we'll see. We'll probably get a good, like a little bit of a benefit, but they're not gonna be anywhere near as amazing as the saturation or the multi-threaded, multi-client numbers. So we throw more and more clients at the cluster then we add another node we can add many more clients to the cluster because Ceph is able to uh, saturate really really well on multi threads and many many clients so yeah that's what we're gonna do today so let's dive in and we'll get started all right so here we go we've got our Ceph cluster up I've got a couple terminals open I've got the Ceph dashboard here showing lab ADM 1 all the way down to lab ADM 6 but I've also got a notepad open here. And what I'm gonna go through first is the numbers that we gathered in the video. And then, like I said, some of the ones I did behind the scenes. So the numbers that we have to beat today uh, would be our sequential writes would be about 5.7 gigabytes a second. That's a pretty darn good number um, of single threaded, single client sequential writes. For our sequential reads, it was actually up to 10 gigabytes a second. This is after tuning, mind you. Um, so those numbers, we're going to try those. We're not going to rebench everything because really what we want to see here today is the saturated cluster numbers and can we beat those? So we've got sequential write. The cluster was able to sequentially write 11 gigabytes a second, 11.2 gigabytes a second, and that was the cluster saturated. So remember, in a three rep pool, if you're writing 11 gigabytes a second, the back end is really writing upwards of like 30 gigabytes a second because we're replicating every object times three. And that reflects in the reads because you're, only, you're reading all of the uh, OS from all OSDs instead of having to replicate. So in the reads, we were able to get 33 gigabytes a second with the five node configuration. That was pretty, pretty fast. Um, and then random read and random write. So random write, we were able to get about 328,000 random IOPS. And then random read, we're about to get able to get about almost 2 million, 1,928,000, uh, 1, there we go, uh, random IOPS. So really, really good numbers, but I'm confident we'll be able to beat those today by adding the sixth node in. So let's get started with the first number. These ones, like I said, we probably won't see a massive uplift, if any, on these. Uh, this is the single client, single threaded, and we'll do these without Ansible because we're just gonna benchmark a single client for these. So we've got lab ADM1 here as our client, so I'll CD into our RBD. Again, remember these RBDs are all pre-filled to make sure that we get performance that is consistent across runs. All right, so what do we got? We got a one meg block size, Q depth of 64, 100 gigabyte size, random, or sorry, regular old sequential write. 
uh, one job, again, single threaded, and the file name is inside of our RBD directory. So let's run it and let's see what we can get here in the background. All right, so kicking off here, we're at about 4.3 gigabytes a second, four, or sorry, 5.5, 5.3. So what were we trying to beat again? 5.7, we may not beat it. Oh, we're up around 5.7, 5.8. All right, so I'll come back when it's done and we'll see what we get. All right, so it looks like we got 5.5. We dropped off by about 200 megabytes which is pretty normal to see. Like I said, I wasn't expecting really much, if anything, on single threaded sequent, or sorry, single threaded workloads, uh, single client, really where we're gonna scale is being able to saturate more and more IO overall, but still good to know. So 5.5 is what we ended up with. If we ran this a few times, I imagine we would probably see a few that hit 5.7, 5.8. All right, so let's go and try some reads now. All right, here we go. Let's run it and see what happens. We might get a little benefit on this. Like I said, reads, you can actually sometimes see a benefit. So we're at about 10.9, 11.5, 11.6. So uh, we'll let this run and see what we get when we come back. All right, so looks like we did win on this one. So we are up to 11.8 gigabytes a second on this one. We can see here, so 11.0 gigabytes. 11.8 gigabytes, so 1.8 gigabytes improvement. Not bad. All right, now these are the ones that we really wanna see how much better we can do. So like I said, we started off with saturating the cluster with 11.2, or sorry, 11.2 Gibby bytes a second. So let's run this Ansible benchmark and we'll get it to benchmark multi-client and see where we end up. All right, here we go. So we're gonna CD into our Etsy Ansible directory and we are going to run our Ansible command. So we're gonna watch over here on the left-hand side. We're gonna see the client IO uh, creep up. So again, we're doing writes right now. So we're at three Gibby bytes, 5.9, 8.8. And this one we'll have to watch live because there won't be a result that, unless I use some magic. But yep, here we go. We're at 16, 17 Gibby bytes already a second. And it looks like we're staying up around 17, which is what I was expecting from previous runs when we first uh, built the cluster, built the sixth node. So that is a substantial improvement. We're saturating right there, right around 17, 16, 17. It's just fluctuating between the two, but it's very stable. So we know that's, that's great. So we're at 17, 16. So let's just call it 16.5 gigabytes a second, which is quite a bit better than the 11.2. 16.5, so... So the way you would write that is 16,500 versus 11,253. Good, I like that. So let's try the reads next and that will be really interesting to see because we were getting some pretty good numbers already at 33 Gibby bytes a second. Okay, so let's go ahead and kick off the read benchmark and see what we get. Okay, here we go. So again, the number to beat is 33 Gibby bytes a second. Let's see where we get to. 25, 35, 41, 50, 50 Gibby bytes a second. And it looks like it's holding strong at 50, 49, 51. Okay, drop down for a second there. Right on, yeah, so we're saturating right around 50, 50 gigabytes a sec, Gibby bytes a second, which is a little more than 50 gigabytes a second. I hate saying Gibby byte if you couldn't tell. All right, good numbers, good numbers. All right, so let's put that up on the board. So let's call that 49. That's really, really good. All right, so let's take a look at saturating, saturating the random write and saturating the random read next. Okay, here we go. We're ready to kick off the random write test. Let me copy this guy up. All right, so we are doing 4K block size, 64Q depth, everything the same except it's random write. And let's see. So number to beat. 
328,000 IOPS. So we're watching over here. This time we're not watching the Mebibytes or the Gibibytes a second. We're watching over on this side at how many IOPS per second. And we know this will translate perfectly because we're using direct IO. Um, if we go back and take a look at our Grafana graphs, we can even see this translate perfectly in IOPS. So already we're up around 488, 512,000 IOPS, 525, 496, 542. Wow really good really good showing all right so yep looks like 530 488 so yep we're around 510 515 that's a really good showing so 515,000 IOPS and then the last one last but not least will be our random IOPS random read IOPS so for the final test here, the big one, two million IOPS that we have to beat on the random reads. Let's go ahead and run it and see what we get. All right, here we go. Moment of truth. Okay, we're already ramped up. 700,000, a little over a million. 1.8 million. 2.13, okay, so we already surpassed our numbers. Let's see what we can get to. 2.2 million, so 200,000 above, 300,000. That's where we're hovering, right around 2.2 million. And we'll wait for it to finish, but I think, yeah, 2.3, pretty good. About 300, 400,000 more, let's give it that. So, yep, there we go. And it's gonna run for a few more seconds, but let's call, there we go. So about 2.3 million. So let's do this, 2,300,000. And so we'll go ahead and put together on screen what percentage improvement that is, along with what percentage increase in nodes we have, or, or even OSD count. All right, so awesome, I think that was a success. So hopefully you guys enjoyed coming along for the ride for this four part series. It was the first time I've done something like this. Um, definitely let us know in the comments anything you'd like to see done better, done differently. Uh, but it was really fun to go through this high performance series. I'd like to maybe do it next with ZFS. Obviously we can't expand with ZFS, uh, but we can expand VDEVs at least. So let us know if you're interested in seeing some build, bench, expand series, also tuning uh, in the NVMe high performance sphere with ZFS. So with that being said, that brings us to the end. Thanks a lot guys for coming along. We'll see you on the next one. What's up guys? We are back and we have finally arrived on part four. No, not part eight. Part <laughs> I was like, that's a lot of fingers.